Hi guys, my name is Elliot and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. I'm an English language teacher based in London in the United Kingdom and the aim of this channel is to really help you elevate all aspects of your English. Your listening, reading, writing, speaking and much more. This is my very first video so I hope you find it useful and today I've decided to talk about the 10 biggest mistakes that my learners make when studying English so you don't have to. So without further ado, let's dive in to number one. Number one. The first mistake my students often make when speaking English is overusing the word seldom, which ironically means rarely. Now, whilst this is grammatically fine and uh, is often used correctly by my students, the truth is we hardly use this word. It sounds archaic, old-fashioned and too formal. So, for example, my students might say, I seldom go to the cinema. This is absolutely fine, makes perfect sense and we understand what you mean, but it just sounds too old-fashioned. So instead, don't be afraid to use rarely. I rarely go to the cinema. This is much more natural, albeit less exciting. The second mistake my students often make is in mixing up the words there, there and there. Now, whilst these words all sound the same, they are in fact incredibly different. Firstly, let's take the word there, spelled T-H-E-R-E. We use this word to refer to something in the distance, something which is not close to us. So, for example, let's pretend you're meeting a friend at the cinema rather than your house. You might say to them, don't meet me here, let's meet there instead. In this situation, there refers to the cinema. On the other hand, the word there, spelled T-H-E-I-R, refers to possession. For example, hey! Don't touch their phones. Here, the word there refers to possession of the phones. These phones belong to them, not us. Finally, we have the word there, spelled T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. This is a shortened version of they are. So, for example, we could say, they are not sure whether to come today. Here, there just simply means they are. So a translation would be, they are not sure whether to come today. A third mistake my students make in English is pronouncing what are in fact silent letters. Now, the temptation when reading English is to read it phonetically, like many other languages, and to pronounce every letter you read. However, Unfortunately, in English, there are many silent letters which you should not pronounce. As an example, we have the word lamb with a silent B at the end, debt with a silent B in the middle, and the word aisle with a silent S in the middle. It can be really difficult to remember all of these silent letters and it just takes a lot of practice, but you need to learn these if you want to avoid making this simple mistake. mistake my students often make when studying English is in the use of the apostrophe, particularly with the word it's. Now, there are two versions of the word it's, one with an apostrophe and one without, and students often mix up the two. Now, if we're using the word it's with an apostrophe, this is short for the two words it is. For example, tomorrow it's my birthday. In other words, tomorrow it is my birthday birthday. However, if we use the word it's without an apostrophe, this is referring to possession. So, for example, the game challenges its players to beat the ice queen. Here, it's is referring to the players. The players belong to the game.
The fifth mistake my students often make when studying English is mixing up the words affect with an A and affect with an E. But what's the difference between these two? Well, affect with an E is a noun, meaning the result of something. On the other hand, affect with an A is a verb, meaning to influence something. For example, the student didn't notice how his results were affected by his studying, but the positive effects soon became clear. Here, the first word is a verb, meaning to influence, the second one is a noun, meaning the results. The sixth mistake my students often make when studying English is mixing up the words lose and loose. The first word, lose, spelled L-O-S-E, means to not be able to find something or to misplace something. For example, I'm always losing my car keys. On the other hand, the word loose, spelled L-O-O-S-E, means to be not close-fitting. For example, this sweater is loose on me. The seventh mistake my students often make is in using double negatives, which are frowned upon in English and are incorrect in most circumstances. Common culprits include I don't know nothing, or I don't know nobody. Instead, what we should say is, I don't know anything, or I don't know anybody. So make sure not to make this same mistake. The eighth mistake is in using irregular plural nouns. Now, a plural is when we have more than one thing, and usually, when we have a plural in English, we just add an S to the end of it. For example, one dog becomes two dogs. One cat becomes five cats, and so on. However, there are many irregular plural nouns, which unfortunately you just need to learn. Now, some of these plural nouns don't change between the singular form and the plural form at all. Some examples of this include sheep. So I have one sheep. I also have two sheep. Or the noun fish. I have one fish, but I also have ten fish. Other plural nouns change their form completely when put into a plural form from the singular form. For example, I might have one mouse, but I will have seven mice. These are just something you need to learn and drill into yourself so you don't make this silly mistake. The ninth mistake my students often make is in their use of articles such as the words a and the. Now the biggest mistake my students make is not using articles at all. In many languages they don't have articles so it's quite common to omit these. However in English Articles are very important, and the second problem, therefore, becomes using the correct article. In English, we have two types of articles, the definite article and the indefinite article. The definite article is the word the. We use this article when talking about something specific or something we have talked about before. On the other hand, the indefinite article, the word a, is used for something general, something which has not been referred to before. So for example, if we say, I saw a dog in the street. Here, we don't know which dog it is, we've not referred to this dog before, it's just any dog. However, if we change that and put the word the instead, I saw the dog in the street, then we're talking about a specific dog, perhaps a neighbour's dog, a friend's dog, or a dog we were talking about earlier. So this does change the meaning of the sentence and it's very important to learn how to use these articles properly. And finally, the tenth and final mistake my students often make is in using the words good and well. Now, the word good is an adjective and modifies a noun. For example, we could say, 
I think he did a good job overall. Here, the word good is modifying the noun job. However, well is an adverb and modifies an action. So, for example, we can't say he did a well job, but what we can say is he did his job well. Here, the word well is modifying the way he did his job. In other words, it's modifying the action, not the noun. So guys, that's it. They were my 10 most common mistakes made by my students when learning English. I hope this video was useful for you. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. In the meantime, good luck with your English journey and I will see you in the next video.